Don't stop painting the mural? Sure thing, boss. For the last three years, I have worked as a muralist for a mural company. It's hard work, but also rewarding. Also, I love the beautification of public spaces. I had a good boss. He was a skilled painter who worked alongside us on the projects in addition to providing us with plenty of financial incentives and encouragements. Unfortunately, he retired last year and gave full control of the business to his partner. It immediately became a dumpster fire. The business partner had controlled the administration side of the company. He was not a painter and didn't understand the work it took. He would overbook clients and overpromise on completion dates. He never offered us incentives and would only berate us for not getting jobs done quick enough. We tried to tell him that the old boss has always encouraged us to make our time and deliver the best murals as the company's reputation rested on the quality of work. We also tried to explain as artists we wanted to be proud of the work that we put out there. He brushed it off with, you're paid to finish jobs, just get it done. This was incredibly demoralizing, and after two months of churning out rushed work, we were burnt out. One of our four muralists quit. The final straw came three months later. Our company won a huge bid to paint the side of a five-story tall building using my design. I told the boss that it would take us five weeks to complete. However, a week before the project was due to start, he told us that we only had three weeks. We protested, citing that we're down one muralist, their safety issues, weather changes, and the complaint complexity of the design. He, of course, told us that the contract has been signed and brushed off our concerns. He did, however, offer us financial incentives for overtime work this time, and knowing that there was nothing we could do, we accepted it. I simplified the design and we planned to stay late. The weather got bad as predicted. There were a few days of rain where we barely got any work done. We fell behind and told the boss that we had to get an extension. Our client was nice enough to grant another week, but our boss was mad. He would show up to the job site regularly just to rush us. On the third week, we were working then a slight drizzle started. We were waiting in our cars hoping that it would pass when the boss showed up. The moment he saw us, he started accusing us of being lazy. To quote, this is why we're falling behind. One of my coworkers said through gritted teeth, can't you see it's raining? But before we could explain why we couldn't paint in the rain, the boss yelled, You're scared of a little drizzle? You shouldn't be a muralist. Get back to work. My coworker shot me a look and I knew immediately the malicious compliance was on. The three of us got back to the scaffolding and began working. The boss smugly said, See, that wasn't so hard and drove off. We kept smiling to ourselves. When the boss returned that afternoon, he was horrified. The rain had washed the paint down the building, leaving paint streaks dripping on the rest of the mural. Basically, the whole mural, three weeks worth of work, was ruined. We noticed him staring slack-jawed, but we kept painting. Then he called us down and cursed us out with all sorts of profanities. When asked, what the heck are you guys thinking? My coworker replied, well, you were the one that told us to do it. My boss's face turned beet red. Then he asked, well, how the hell are we gonna fix this? My coworker simply replied, you mean, how are you gonna fix this? We've decided to all quit. And indeed, we had while we were working in that rain. We packed up our tools as the boss went from yelling to begging to yelling again. We just ignored him. That was the last day we were on site. I felt so relieved the moment I got home. The aftermath. I got a call a week later from my old boss. I was ready to tell him that I won't come back to work, but it turned out that he was just checking in on me. He apologized for what happened. He also told me that my new boss lost the contract and had to fork out the money to repaint the whole building wall blank again so another muralist can take over. The company is floundering now. The new boss can't find anyone to replace us, and he probably never will. What he didn't realize was that finding any good muralist willing to work for a company is difficult, let alone a team. Most muralists are more than happy to self-employ. More importantly, not many people have the skills and patience as well as physical abilities to create beautiful landscape works of art from great heights. I give it another few months before the company completely shuts down. My coworkers and I still keep in touch. They got a few projects in the works from clients that they knew during their time with the company. I help out now and then, but I'm still pretty burnt out from the experience, so I think I'll look for other jobs for now. I live in a city that has some amazing murals, and I've always been awed by the stuff that art is create. I used to be really into graffiti art when I was younger and luckily got to meet some local artists that have since gone on to work for large brands and sports teams. Like the old saying goes, you can't rush art and you probably shouldn't rush great employees either. Please resend my tickets. 
This past weekend, the dance company I do box office work for had hit its final show run for our season. We do a few runs a year, always renting out a large theater for them, which is separate from the main box office building. This means we don't have free access to the physical box office at the theater. We have time frames when we can be in there. Fairly standard, but it limits our availability on show days. So my manager set up an automated email for incoming inquiries just saying, we're busy, we may be unable to get back to you right away. Again, very standard for our organization. On Saturday, early afternoon, I'm still at home and I check ticket sales in the inbox just to see if there are any super outstanding issues. A woman named Cynthia had sent an email saying she never received her tickets for the show that evening. I roll my eyes, but it's not a real problem. I look her up, see she made a purchase earlier that day and selected that she wanted her tickets emailed. So I just send her a reply saying the tickets should be attached to your order confirmation, but the email may have wound up in your spam folder. So please check there. An hour or so later, I get a response saying there's only a receipt, no confirmation email. Can you please resend the ticket? At this point, I'm just assuming that she's likely just a senior age patron and she has no idea how technology works. That's fine. It happens a lot. So I just resend the tickets. That'll be the end of it. I figure an hour or so later, I leave for the theater, not thinking of it anymore. When I arrive, I open up my email though. I have five new emails in my inbox that weren't there since I last checked. Four from Cynthia, one from my manager. The first email she sent said, no, I don't want that ticket. That was just the test order I did to check to see if I get emails. I want the tickets I initially ordered. Six minutes after that, Cynthia said, can you please resend? Three minutes later, please resend. Eight minutes later, please resend my tickets and stop responding saying it may take some time to get back to me. The email from my manager manager said that Cynthia emailed her twice, requesting her tickets be resent. All that in a 17 minute time span listed above. Again, I roll my eyes and sigh in frustration because this woman never specified that she had multiple orders. And instead of trying to contact us first, she just bought another ticket to test things and went on to be unclear in her communication. Plus, she clearly doesn't understand what automatic reply is. But I figured if she wanted to get snippy about it, I'd just be petty in return. I found her real tickets and sent an email with them. Half an hour later and no response from her. I resent them again. 15 minutes later, I sent them again. I resent the tickets a total of seven times. I figured at least one for each time she asked them to be sent, right up until 15 minutes before the show began. When a woman in her mid 40s or so approached the box office waving her smartphone with her tickets visible on them. Hi, I'm Cynthia. I just wanted to know what was wrong with your email and ticket system today. Oh, nothing was wrong, ma'am. Well, I kept trying to get my ticket sent and it just kept saying the same message over and over. Oh, that's our generic automated reply. We set it up for show days in case we can't help someone on time. She looks sheepish for a moment, but recovers. Oh, right, that makes sense. But why did it take so long to find the right tickets? Well, you had multiple orders and never specified which order it was. So I just assumed it was the order that you made earlier today. And I didn't really consider the one you made back in March. I apologize for not making the connection. Again, a sheepish look comes across her face, but she presses on. But when you did find the right order, why did I keep getting tickets sent? I got several emails with the tickets and one just sent a couple minutes ago. Oh, well, you were so eager in the emails earlier, but when I did send the tickets, you never responded. So I wasn't sure if you were getting them or not. So I just wanted to make sure that you were, in fact, getting your tickets. By this point, she made all the connections in her head. If she had just been clear and patient with her request, she could have gotten her tickets right away, saved money, she never asked for a refund on the test order, and wouldn't have gotten bombarded with a bunch of emails. She thanked me for the assistance and went on to enjoy the show, while my manager and I just looked at each other and chuckled. I really want to dislike the ticket woman the OP speaks about in this post, but I'm not gonna lie, ordering tickets, especially the day of a show, can be pretty stressful. Although I do think she should have just chilled and waited for a response or went to the box office earlier in case of any issues. Luckily, this woman did seem to come around and hopefully learned a lesson in patience. Okay, I'll downgrade your computer. This was quite a few years ago, but I used to do IT for a company that was suddenly experiencing rapid growth. This meant many new employees got new out of the box computers, but it also meant that it was hard to always be fully stocked. The shipping was quick and they basically ordered the exact amount of computers required to fill the new employee needs. Employees before this obviously had computers that may be a couple years old. This story will feature one such employee. People involved in this story are me and Excel, the employee's main tool for this job, 
but this is what I'm gonna be calling them. Excel had noticed many of the newer employees were getting brand new computers and he felt upset he wasn't using one of these computers. He actually had been upgraded a year before, which was also before the rapid growth. So what was this upgrade? The year before there was a budget to upgrade CAD workstation users to brand new ones. The company bought their equipment outright. So the former CAD workstations could easily be reused easily for non-CAD users. For those not familiar, these machines are often higher end as they are used for higher end visual works, virtual machines, etc. Our company paid about 2,500 each for these. This was one of those repurposed machines. It was currently two-ish years old and had 16 gigs of RAM, quad core ion processor, SSD, and a work station video card that doesn't really benefit him. What was in the brand new computers people got? A dual core CPU, eight gigs of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte non SSD drive. You can probably guess where this is going. How come most of the coworkers have better computers than me? I think your computer seems fine, but if you're having performance issues, I could take a look at it. It doesn't run as quickly as my coworkers. Could you show me quickly what yours is doing? He showed me he was pretty much ineffectively running his Excel, causing it to be bloated with overly large file sizes considering it's Excel. He honestly should have had a few different Excel worksheets and files for this. This was more of an Excel limitation back then than a hardware issue. I talked about this a bit and he didn't want to listen. See, it's not running very well. I see that, have you tried doing yes? and it didn't work. Could I get an upgrade? Honestly, your computer is likely better than your colleagues, so I don't think that this is going to help Excel. Would you mind if I helped you optimize your files? It's not gonna work, I tried. Can you give me a different computer? One like my coworkers have? Sure, if your manager sends me an email that says that it is vital to your work, I could have one ordered for you. That would be good, I'll have them email you. At this point, I thought it was done as most won't bother their managers about this. If they do, most managers will automatically say no. I didn't want to downgrade the guy even though he was coming across as arrogant. Unfortunately, I was wrong. I guess it was in his department's budget or he was just doing important work for the department. I already knew what was going to likely happen from this so I immediately forwarded the email to my manager. I then promptly called my manager as well and gave him the quick rundown. I told him this is obviously going to come back later, he's using Excel wrong and won't listen. Why didn't I have him use his file on another employee's computer to show him you may ask? privacy and confidentiality reasons. You're only supposed to use your assigned computer except in certain circumstances. So fast forward to him getting his new computer. He failed to back up his data, so I had to help him retrieve that. Also, how long did his computer last before he was upset it wasn't working as well, you may ask? One hour. Unfortunately, I was busy because as I said, the company was growing fast and I couldn't run to help him over something with this type of priority. He could do his job, just not optimally because of his Excel knowledge. I had him go through service desk knowing it's coming back to me eventually. He had to wait about two days. He begged for his other computer back. At this point, I was done playing this ridiculous game. He was taking way too much of my time and I'm not swapping it again. Also, the computer was just billed to his department. I don't really want to unassign it and reassign it with his old one and have it put back into inventory pool for his department. Do you mind if I actually test for a minute to see if I can fix your Excel first? It's not gonna do anything. I use this program every day. I know what I'm doing. Okay, but I need to test it because if I don't, my manager's going to ask me why I didn't before I swapped again. Note, my manager trusts me and doesn't care, but I need to make it clear that this is a requirement without creating a conflict such as him thinking I believe he's lying. Sure, whatever, I'm gonna go grab a coffee. Actually, can you grab a chair and stay for a couple of minutes? I proceed to quickly check Excel file to avoid breaking reference and make his basically 10 megabyte, 32 bit garbage Excel file into five different files. Honestly, these files are still pretty bad, but suddenly Excel isn't hanging or freezing for a minute or more anymore. How did you do that? Is there any way that you can combine the files for convenience? I think you should keep the files separate. When a file gets too bloated, Excel struggles to handle them. At this point, half of his department is looking at us. I can tell if you are trying not to laugh. I think they kind of realized that this guy was kind of rude to me before and was the cause of his own issue. Oh, well, okay, I guess, is what Excel said. I stand up and tell him to have a good day and leave. He didn't even say thanks. I got confused just listening to the story a bit because I don't have that much knowledge of Excel. Not something I ever really used, but separating files just seems as confusing to me as well. But then again, it's not something I use all the time. So the confusion is expected. Can't say the same thing for annoying employees though. If you use a program almost daily, it's probably best that you try to learn the ins and out of it as well, just to save yourself some embarrassment. 
You want me to call the tenant? Sure, I'll call the tenant. This story is about a job that I just quit. I doubt someone there uses Reddit, so I'll share it with you. Here we go. We were moving to another office, so things were chaotic. Days were really hot, so when we discovered our new office didn't have AC, we were crushed. We tried to work there anyways, but two members started getting dizzy and weak, so we called our boss. He was solving some problems on our previous location and told us to go home and not come in the next day, since he'd buy a new AC and install it then. We were happy with this free day off and my boss went on his way to buy the equipment. This story is about what happened when he bought it. So this new office was somewhere fancy. Our boss was a tenant in this building and there were doctors, lawyers, dentists, and all kinds of fancy people. Everyone wore suits and ties since most of the tenants were rich. The building workers were super polite, mostly because some of the tenants were rude to them, acted entitled, and tried to get them fired for petty reasons. Anyways, my boss called some of his friends and said, hey, would you you help me install an AC on my new office? I'll pay you with some booze. And they accepted. Since it was, again, really hot, my boss and their friends were there the next morning wearing tank top shorts and sandals. They were greeted by someone who worked there. I don't remember his name, but I'll call him assistant. That knew who my boss was and would follow him around, answer his questions, and help him with any info about the building or the room. You know, a good human being. He was supposed to know all the tenants, so everybody liked him. But I guess he wasn't in a leadership position because his workmates didn't seem to enjoy his presence. He didn't seem to care though. So assistant greeted my boss and followed him to our new room. My boss said he saw the receptionist look at him with disgust because of their clothes, but didn't think much about it. What were we supposed to do? There was only one entrance. They went upstairs and started working. Eventually, my boss noticed that he forgot some tools in his car. No problem. The assistant went with him. They got it and came back up. At reception, again, Mr. Receptionist looked annoyed. Me. My boss, who I admit wasn't the most organized, noticed he forgot to buy something. Okie dokie, assistant always happy to help, followed him to the entrance and waited for him to buy his tool somewhere near and come back. Again, as they got in, receptionist looked mad. For the third time, my boss had to go through reception to do something and get something he forgot. Assistant went with him, assuring him it was okay and that he had every right to come and go as he pleased. But this time, receptionist had enough. When my boss got into the building, he saw reception come in his direction, fuming, but he didn't say anything to my boss. Instead, he went straight to assistant and, completely ignoring my boss, said something along the lines of, what the hell is this? Why are those people coming and going and there's no order in this building? Why don't you do anything? Assistant just looked at him and said calmly, I'm sorry, but they need to make as many trips as necessary to install the new AC today so that tomorrow a team can come work without any interruptions or discomfort. I don't care, said the reception. Those people are annoying our staff, our guests, and our tenants. This building is no place for them. If you don't stop this mess right now, I'm going to call the tenant and tell them you're allowing such people in his new office. I think you can guess what happened next. According to my boss, the assistant's face lit up and smiled. Oh, really? Please do. You can talk to the tenant right now if you like. He then turned to my boss, who just looked at him with an innocent, yes, how can I help you, face. My boss said the receptionist's face went white. He tried to say something, but couldn't pick the words, so he just left in a hurry. My boss and assistants laughed for a while about it and went back to the office. The AC got installed and we worked the next day with ease. Okay, I don't want to assume here, but I want to say these were Latinos in the story. I could totally be wrong, but I got Latino family members and paying in booze is a total form of payment. And a majority of them could also tell you stories similar to the one that this OP just posted. Please stop judging people by their appearance. Some people just want to feel comfortable in what they wear. A smelly, disgusting customer comes into my store. I use an entire bottle of hand sanitizer to get clean. So have you ever seen one of those retail workers that washes their hands religiously? Allow me to give you a prime example as to why. I used to work in a store's phone center, which is right by the front door. Since it was located so close to our most used entry, it would sometimes get pretty warm when the doors would constantly open and all the people came in and out. So we had a little fan on our counter by the register and it was behind a divider so it was out of view of the customers. I was working up there one day when this old guy, maybe 60 to 65, comes in for me to help him with his phone. As he came in, I noticed he looked kind of sweaty, which was understandable as it was a fairly hot day this day. 
Also, I thought his hair looked kind of sweaty, but no, his hair was just extremely greasy to the point where I saw it literally dripping. It was so wet from grease that it looked like he had just dunked his head in water about 30 seconds before walking into the store. He gets to the counter and I attempt to greet him as I do all customers, but I had to stop and pause halfway through to suppress the immediate urge to instantly vomit when his smell hit me. So it probably sounded something like this. Hi, how can I help you? I'm not exaggerating when I say it smelled like someone had taken a porter potty that had been used for a week at a state fair, dumped it in the middle of a highway for a week during an extreme heat wave. And then this guy came along and just rolled around in it. Also, he brought flies with him, as if they followed him. There was like five or six of them just flying around him. It's not a stretch to say that smelling raw sewage would have been preferable. I subtly pointed the fan as much toward him and away from me as I could without making it obvious, so it would be blowing the nose hair singeing smell away from me. I tried to continue as best I could, while leaning as far back as I could without looking like I was trying to get away from him. He told me his phone wasn't calling out and he wanted me to fix it. Now normally I don't have a problem holding a phone if a customer hands it to me, but this phone was the most disgusting thing I've ever been handed. He told me he had only bought it a couple of months prior. He pulled out a flip phone that was supposed to be black in color. What he actually pulled out was something that was once upon a time most likely black, but now was one giant stain that was covered with dried drops of brownish mysterious liquid. It also had this yellowed screen, which should not be able to happen in the very short span of time that he had it. I told him to just set it down on the counter for me, and I used only my fingertips to touch his phone and use the speakerphone when I tested a call. I got his phone fixed and sent him off happy. Then I looked at the fingertips that I used, and I'm not kidding you when I say it looked like I had been handling rusty nails for hours, which at this point I almost vomited. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that I almost used an entire bottle of hand sanitizer and then I went to the restroom to scrub my hands until every bit of brown was off and my hands were completely red, followed by another hand drenching of sanitizer. I now impulsively sanitize my hands after every customer regardless of whether or not I've touched anything from them. So next time you see someone obsessively washing or sanitizing their hands, just let them. You never know what mess they might have been through. Bro, this story is super relatable. I used to work retail and man, I always say if you want to be a writer, work retail for a little bit so you can just see how people look and behave. It will be one of the best writing experiences you will ever get, but man, you will meet some characters and some might be as bad or worse than what this OP described. But let me ask you this question. Do you think this OP is a jerk for describing the customer the way they did? Let me know in the comments. That's it for today's video. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on any content, hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell to turn on notifications. If you want to finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you're someone who live streams and needs copyright free music, check out the Cream of the Crop music by searching Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you choose. Remember, it's free.